Hi folks, this is Dragon. I'm on a um, 300 acre property which I normally go shooting on. We're out getting firewood today. But uh, here's a bunch of uh, wallabies. Off they go. Yeah, he spotted us. We've got our rifles with us today, but I'm not going to shoot him because we don't really need to. So, uh, I don't know if you can see them, they're going now. Oh, there's one, there's one. Yeah, quite a good size. Brutal stoop. Actually wallabies, but you know what I mean. Uh, we brought our rifles out with us today too. There's a fair old dog problem out here and uh, some wild uh, pigs. So, uh, more of a protection than anything. But, uh, yeah. That's a bit of the Australian bush. And you can't run these down, they can outrun a human, so uh, the Aboriginals were masters at it, hunting them. But for us modern Europeans, the rifle. You know, folks, just been cutting up some firewood, having a good look around, and uh, found some punk wood. This stuff here. Okay, uh, like. Cutting down iron barks at the moment, dead ones. Been standing for quite a while. Good firewood, produces a lot of charcoal. Uh, the more mature trees are, it's a very dense hardwood, uh, makes excellent building material, uh, stones up really well. But it also, uh, for fires, it makes uh, very, very good charcoal and produces a lot of heat. So, anyway, having a little bit of a look around. Before we started cutting and yep found some punk wood a little bit on the damp side that's all right it'll dry out a little bit more there that's good and i found some bracket fungus on another tree i just dropped down it's uh, still a little bit on the green side but uh, we can dry it out that can be used uh, as a fire extender or you can char it and uh, use that as another fire lighting method. So, uh, that's some punk wood. Australian style. South East Queensland style. So, uh, later on I'll gather it up and take it home with me. Not a lot around home at the moment. So, uh, might as well get it while you can grab it while you can get it. Okay, folks, what we've got here in front of us, and this being a cattle property, beef cattle property, is dry cow manure. That's very dry, very dry indeed. Very light. You can also use that in a fire making process. But also, if you burn this stuff in a fire, um, a lot of cultures did it, burnt animal manure in fire when there was a shortage of wood, particularly uh, in the Middle East and some Middle Eastern cultures and that sort of thing. Used to burn animal dung to make a fire, keep a fire going. But uh, smoke from this, very good insect repellent. Mosquitoes, flies, that sort of thing. Stinks like hell when it burns, but that's the idea of it. So that's a, a natural insect repellent for around your campsite. So, uh, haven't found any um, kangaroo poop yet. Uh, so, uh, well, that's another, that's another one. Just looking around here, just looking to see what's available. So, uh, always keep an eye out for things you can use, whether it's natural. These are cattle, cattle uh, droppings. It can also be used. In a raw situation, you're probably going to find quite a few of these gum ferals. So, also makes good manure for the garden too. It really does. Alrighty, moving on. Oh, right, folks, I've just uh, dropped this young, a relatively young iron bark tree. It was dead. You know, we're only cutting the dead ones down for firewood. Um, what I did notice before I cut it down was uh, some uh, bracket fungi. It's 
quite a bit out there actually. It's still quite green actually. It's uh, it's not completely dried out. So, uh, and the green leaves are ever present in Lantana. Wonderful stuff. So, uh, yeah, that break of fun. I'll take off this tree because the tree's already dead and it's down on the ground. And uh, I'll take it home and uh, dry it out. Uh, that can be used for uh, primitive fire lighting techniques, fire extinguisher, it's not extinguisher, extender, and uh, it can be used uh, for charring, although um, I've seen mixed results on that depending I guess on, on the type of bracket fungus, but uh, anyway, there's another item in the bush that we found that uh, aid us in making fire one way or the other. Oh, I just cut some of that bracket fungi off the tree. It's quite a big piece there, and another smaller piece behind it. And uh, just from the feel of it, it's still quite damp inside. So uh, we'll let that dry out. We're in our cooler months here. Daylight, shorter daylight hours, so that's going to take a while to, to dry out. But, uh, that's looking good. That's a good piece there. That's the other smaller piece behind it. So when you're out in the bush, you really gotta know what to look for and know where to look for it. So this sort of stuff, so it was almost pretty high up in the tree. It was above my height. And then uh, if it was the only piece around, the only way I was going to get it was climb the tree. And uh, not that uh, I don't think you will find yourself in that situation, but uh, yeah. So uh, there it is. The bracket fungus. So I'm not sure we've cut down. And uh, Bob's just chipping off this very uh, porous, deteriorated, I suppose it's underbark. Um, very much like punkwood, there's a good example there. Look at that. Oh, that, that'd be nice. Let me see. Yep. Nice. That's real nice. Oh, look at that. Very good fire starter once it dries out. You could probably even char this. Is that that fungus you were looking for? Right? Yeah, that's a uh, fungus here. It's still um, damp inside, so it, uh, it dried it's out a bit. It's like cork, didn't it? Yeah. But if you can get a spark to strike it um, once it's real dry it's a, a what they call a fire ex extender where you can um, just smoulders you can carry a carry that for quite a distance to start another fire it almost looks like cork the way it's yeah corkish construction isn't it but this one was way up high in the fork of the tree I couldn't reach it it's only the fact that I looked up and saw it. And uh, that's what I've been showing you. You've got to know where to look and what you're looking for. And it's not always going to be at arm's length. Oh, look at that. That's great. Yeah. Oh, bush tucker. Look at this. Look at that. You don't want to grub? Look at that. Good source of protein. You need him raw or cook him. Good source of protein, yeah. That's it's quite common under the bark of these trees, particularly um the ones that are near expiry date. 
Look at that. I won't even have a munch on him to see what he tastes like. <laughs> Never eaten one of these before, but I've tried ants. Hey, I'll do that. Let the folks know what it tastes like. <laughs> well, there's his head. Just take the body off him. And I've got to say, it wasn't an unpleasant taste. It was a rather bland, actually. It wasn't gritty. I'm still kicking. It hasn't killed me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, good source of protein. You can eat them raw, the Aboriginals used to, or you can cook them up on a shovel over a fire. They reckon it tastes better that way. But, uh, yeah, maybe you can see my teeth marks in there, but I did actually eat the, uh, the back end of it. <laughs> uh, Bob can attest to that. Did I eat the back end of that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. hmm, not bad. Not bad at all. I'm going to find no fault with the cooking. <laughs> no. <laughs> But, uh, no, a good source of protein. You probably have to hunt around for a bit uh, to get good, a good meal out of them. But uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed that actually. I've eaten ants, meat ants, I showed in a previous video. Yeah, I dropped his head. Anyway, yeah, didn't taste yucky at all. Quite pleasant. Bland. Might throw some garlic in with him next time. Okay, see you later, folks. Oh. We've just uh, cut up another tree, another dead one, iron bark, good wood. Just panning around here at the moment. There's a uh, another bit of bush tucker with a prickly pear. That bush is looking a bit, uh, the tree's looking a bit sad actually. Uh, this is fairly typical of the countryside around here, uh, the Australian bush. Let's see if we can zoom in. Been up the top of that hill, it's pretty rugged stuff, thick bush, uh, very big uh, basalt um, boulders up the top there so you really need some good footwear, ankle support, so uh, yeah we've been over the top of that hill a few years back, pretty thick bush. So uh, anyways, there's something else I want to show you guys, ladies and gents. Just found something else here. Okay, this one here. I just pulled out of the grass. Oh, it's got spikes on it. Got on your dragon, should have your gloves on. Okay, this is a wild raspberry bush. It's got no fruit on it at the moment, it's the wrong time of year. But uh you can see the end there is a nice, nice good shoot on it, so it's doing very well, it's thriving. So if you're quick enough in the bush before the animals get it, and we have got rabbits in this area and birds and that sort of thing that love this sort of thing, that's wild raspberry. No fruit on it at the moment, wrong time of year, but uh, thriving very well. But if you have a look through around here, um, at the beginning of this video we, we saw some wallabies, there's rabbits in this area, uh, but with this grass it's pretty hard to see the rabbits, um, there are clear patches on this farm, um, over that hill is where the farmhouse is, early morning, late evening. If you're lucky enough, you can spot them in clear areas, but uh, trying to spot them in this grass during the day or any time of day is near on impossible. So uh, that's one of the things about uh, hunting. Um, the grass in this paddock here uh, has been waist high at times, um, so even seeing small wallabies uh, can be uh, pretty difficult. So. Uh, just pan around a bit. Oh, there's my old bush vehicle. What we've got over here, what we call is, we haven't got really actually got any free range, okay? That's another farm over there. You might be able to see some crops of some sort in over there. There's a house on the top of that ridge. There's another house. Just pan right. 
Yeah, right behind that tree. Good on you, dragon. No, just to the right of it. Okay. And just in front of us here, we've got the fence. Now, that's the boundary fence for this property. But if I was coming in from the east, on my right-hand side, the farmhouse for this property is over the hill. You can't see it. So if I was wandering through here looking for game or whatever the case may be, I don't know whose land it is. I've got no idea because it could be that guy's over there or the farmhouse over the hill. I know it's his piece of property but if I was a stranger I wouldn't know. So this is one of the things you've got to think about if it ever comes to that when you're foraging around you're crossing farmland and these fences will be up for quite some time. You don't know who owns what, they could be just dividing fences or they could be boundary fences. So, uh, and no, they haven't got signs on them. Trespassers will be shot on sight and so on. Um, but those are the things you've got to be aware of. You know you're on somebody's property, but you don't know who. And uh, in a time when uh, fences eventually disappear, or you've got a more open range situation, like in some countries, you don't know whose property you're on. You've got no idea. Are they going to take a pot shot at you just because you're passing through? I don't know. Not a very nice thought, but uh, something to think about, folks, anyway. Alrighty. Now I'll light up some wood now. Well, just looking around this wood pile, folks. We've still got some firewood to load up. And it's getting rather late in the afternoon, so we're running a bit short of light. What we've got here in front of us. It's a brack, uh, fungus, a drier type, much drier than the one I found before. Now this one, let's see if I can zoom in on this. No, wrong way, dragon, go back. Okay, there it is. This one's deteriorated significantly to the point where you've got a sponge-like effect in the middle of it, uh, which will quite easily catch a spark of flint, flint steels or even a blast match. Uh, this is a good find. I've been looking around all day for one of these. So, uh, I'll just zoom out a bit. Bang it on. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. That'll catch a spark just nicely. Very spongy. It's pretty dry, too. That's good. I'm not lighting any fires today because uh, we try dry wind blowing at the moment. Even though this grass isn't dead, completely dead, it's drying off. So the last thing we need is a grass fire through this farm because this is all his winter feed up here for his cattle. So we're not lighting any naked flames up here. But, um, certainly not something I can try out at home. That's a nice piece. I like that. So. Uh, Found that on this wood pile. These were knocked down a couple of years ago and they were putting in a new fence. So, uh, but at one stage that was that was growing on the tree up pretty high by the look of it. Trunk root systems down to my left a fair way. So, uh, yeah, when you walk around the bush, it's not spot on the ground five feet in front of you, it's all around you, up, down, sideways. You just got to know where to look, what you're looking for. I'm quite happy with that. Okay. Alright folks, we're pulling out now. Just driving across the grass paddock and the, the old troopy. Bless it, rubber tyres. I love this beast. But anyway, a little bit of the Australian bush. That's the hill I was talking about before, I've been up in there, very thick bush. Very rocky. So uh, I'll just pan around. <coughs> Excuse me. We've got a pretty heavy load on, so we've got to drive fairly slowly across these paddocks. I think a lot of people don't realise is that these vehicles can, these old uh, Toyotas can take a lot of punishment drive across these paddocks at the speed of sound. 
groups of people inside that are getting knocked around and bumped around and all that sort of thing and I've seen some serious injuries. Idiots the way they drive these vehicles across ground like this. So uh, See it just off to the mount, I'll get past this tree. The mountain's off there in the distance. They're the Bunya Mountains. All Rhone Forest up there, National Park. See some uh, communications towers up there, there's about eight of them. UHF repeaters and so on. So, uh, just coming up to the fence line bottom side of this ridge you can just see in there just how thick that bush is. Try and hack your way through that with a full backpack. The nose warmed up quite nicely actually. We had a bit of frost last night but uh, yeah, you can see how thick it is. And there's also hoop pine on this hill further around towards the farmhouse. So uh, springtime I'll come back try and get some uh, pine resin out of it and see what I can do with it. So uh, that's about it folks. We're getting a bit dizzy watching this because we're bouncing around a lot. But there's a little bit of the Australian bush, fairly typical of this area. Um, the water is a big problem, finding water. It was worse than a drought. So uh, that's about it folks. So uh, Catch it all later. Well, this is the, uh, the day after, the morning after actually. Uh, after a little foray up the hill yesterday getting firewood. A couple of nice T-bone on the hoof there. So uh, that hill in the distance, uh, I think it's about eight clicks. As the crow flies, that's roughly where our retreat is, just on the uh, about centre screen there. So uh, I don't know if you can see it very clear. There's a bit of fog and mist around this morning. Uh, that's all thick bush up there. So uh, all farmland around here, crops, a uh, bit of dairy. Stuff like that. Uh, a lot of the crops around here are all uh, it's, it's uh, dry agriculture. Uh, some of the farms have got uh, very deep bores. They use three-phase power to get the water out of the ground. Not so much that it's that deep. It's just that they need the volume to get it out to irrigate crops. So uh, as you can probably see, it's pretty dry here. Uh, had some heavy frost in the last couple of days, and. Uh, I'm looking towards the east at the moment. I can't bring any more around to the left, otherwise you're going to get an eyeful of sun. But uh, yeah, good couple of days. And uh, I was talking to Bob last night. And uh, he wants to uh, flash up the charcoal forge and uh, make some night blades. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, I can get a video of that too. That little uh, larvae I ate yesterday I found under the tree bark, they're quite common around here. Uh, just got to know where to look. Vine bark trees and uh, the black wattle trees. It's actually a larvae of a beetle. So uh, I really, really haven't eaten one for a long, long time. So it wasn't my first time actually. But uh, yep, still kicking. Didn't make me sick or anything like that. And uh, As I said, it was a bit bland. Would be nice with a bit of garlic. But it's food, it's, it's bush tucker. Good protein. All right, folks. That's about it for today. I don't know if I'll do any more video shoots today. Just depends what Bob and I are gonna do and I'll have to head back home tonight anyway. So I'll uh, catch you later.